You ready? Let's go. As ready as I'll ever be, Andres. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Robert Lustig, who's a medical doctor and a researcher and expert on um, pediatric obesity and uh, an internet superstar with millions of views. Hardly. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, anyway. Thank you. Just remember, it's about the message, not the messenger. Right. So just to kick things off, uh, since you're an expert on obesity, isn't it really all about eating less and exercising more? Um, depends on who you talk to. Uh, I think that that's actually what has set us back so severely in this entire uh, disaster, is mm -hmm. this concept. Eat less, exercise more. Well, mm -hmm. first of all, people can't eat less. And people right. can't exercise more. They can't? If you, if you say eat less, exercise more, basically what you're saying is it's your fault. Right. You're putting the onus on the patient that it's their fault. And you're basically saying it's your behavior that caused this, mm. so which I don't believe. No? So what, what causes it? Obesity? Well, you know, prior to 1940, pretty much across the board, people recognized that obesity was a defect in fat deposition. Right. So if you... B there are two, two ways to interpret the first law of thermodynamics. Mm -hmm. The first way is if you eat it, you better burn it or you're going to store it. The conventional way. The conventional the way. Wa the way we've been uh, saying, you know, uh, through the obesity epidemic without much effect. Exactly. And it's done nothing. There's been no movement whatsoever anywhere in the world on that message mm -hmm. because it's not correct. The second way, which I think makes much more sense, is mm -hmm. if you're going to store it, that is an obligate weight gain set up by a biochemical force yeah. that is essentially out of your control. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about what those forces are. And you expect to burn it. That is normal energy expenditure for normal quality of life. Right. Because energy expenditure and quality of life are synonymous. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have to eat it. And now the two behaviors that we associate with obesity, the increased intake gluttony and yeah. the decreased expenditure sloth, mm -hmm are actually markers for the biochemical process mm -hmm. rather than causes. So the question like is which comes first. More like results than causes. Exactly. Yeah. It's so a what's result, what's not a cause. What's the cause in that, in that situation? Well, the question is what's the biochemical force that's driving weight gain? Yes. Well, there are several, but I would say that 90% of obese people have one. It's right. called insulin. Insulin okay. is the energy storage hormone. Insulin's mm -hmm. job is to take whatever you're not burning and store it as fat. Yeah. If you burn what you eat and there's nothing to store, you don't need much insulin. Mm -hmm. If you don't burn what you eat, then you need to store it and insulin will go up very specifically to drive that energy into fat cells yeah. for storage. Insulin shunts sugar to fat. Insulin makes fat more insulin more fat, period. Right. So if you have high insulin levels, levels, you're going to store fat and you will become probably obese in the long run. Absolutely. Now, it just so happens that when you say high insulin levels, you make that sound like that's an easy thing to figure out. Right. What is it? Not so easy because there are two insulin dynamic disorders. Mm -hmm. And that's what I talked about here mm -hmm. at the ASBP meeting. Mm -hmm. There's one called insulin resistance, which people know about. Yeah, and metabolic syndrome, obesity, type 2 diabetes. Exactly, and it's a sympathetic nerve-mediated phenomenon, and it's primarily liver and muscle. Mm -hmm. And then there's a second one called insulin hypersecretion, mm -hmm. which is not nearly as well known. It's a vaguely mediated phenomenon. It's a pancreatic beta cell phenomenon, mm -hmm. and you can't see it on a fasting specimen you have to stimulate the beta cell to release the insulin in order to see it. So most people don't do those studies, so they can't see it. So what kind of patients uh, has that problem? Well, the quintessential prototypic patient that has this problem is the child who had a brain tumor, had it resected or uh, radiated, mm -hmm. and then becomes massively obese. Mm -hmm. Now, this is how I got into obesity 16 years ago, was taking care of these kids, and it's called hypothalamic obesity. So that's one of your specialities, but it's not, it's not right. very common compared to obesity in the society today. Exactly, right. But it's a window mm -hmm. on showing how the neuroendocrinology of energy balance works. Yeah. And it turns out that the reason why these kids gain so much weight is because they have leptin resistance, mm -hmm. but they have mm -hmm. organic 
anatomic leptin resistance. Mm -hmm. Those neurons that would normally transduce the leptin signal in the brain mm -hmm. are dead. Yeah, okay. So their brain sees starvation all the time, no matter what. Right, but that's a very special case. Well, yes, it is. But the rest of the world suffers from functional leptin resistance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in fact, this hypothalamic obesity is really just sort of a prototype for what's going on in general obesity. Okay. The question is, if you don't have a brain tumor and you're obese, mm -hmm. why do you have leptin resistance? What caused the leptin resistance? Yeah. And our work and the work of many other people, and when you synthesize the work together, it basically leads to one answer and one answer only. Appreciate insulin. It. So insulin promotes leptin resistance. Right. So makes, insulin. Uh, so the body can't see all the fat and well, it can't see the leptin. Right. More hungry. That's right, and it makes you more hungry. So there are numerous studies that show that the degree of insulin resistance um, predicts how much food people will eat at a metabolic buffet. Mm. This is work from Hahn and Yanofsky, and we've done work very similar to this as well. Um, if you go to the literature. The literature says that insulin causes satiety, and that is true in the acute situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is not true in the chronic situation, and right. there the data is much less clear, but we have it, and it shows that insulin actually promotes further food intake. Right. So in, in your view, which I agree with, of course, um, insulin is the main problem behind obesity today. Well, it's one of the main problems, and it's probably the primary main problem in the majority of people. W and the question is, what made their insulin go up? Exactly. That's right. the question, and, and what do you do about it, right? And what do you do about it? Right. So what's the answer? Well, the first thing is you have to diagnose them. Mm -hmm. About 18% of the population has essentially the same phenomenon that these brain tumor kids have. Mm -hmm. They just don't have a brain tumor. Right. They're releasing insulin from the pancreas because the vagus nerve tells their pancreas to do so. Mm -hmm. Those patients can be treated with a drug that suppresses insulin release. Mm -hmm. For instance, we used octreotide, but it's not on the market and it's got side effects, so mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that everybody do that. No. Or the other way you could treat uh, those patients would be uh, a very low-carb diet. Mm -hmm. That might be the place where low-carb diets work best. More possible for, for regular people to, mm -hmm. to do. Right. And it makes sense with the data that exists out in the world in terms of uh, low-carb diets and weight loss. However, if you don't have insulin hypersecretion mm -hmm. and you have insulin resistance, mm -hmm. the question is, what made you insulin resistant? Right. And the, that's a complicated issue, and there are probably many things that make you insulin resistant. For instance, glucocorticoids, other drugs, um, uh, atypicals, uh, uh, medications of various sorts. Uh, certainly sedentary activity will do it. Uh, but I think the big issue worldwide that causes insulin resistance is fructose. Fructose, fructose that's meaning sugar. Coca-Cola. That's right. Because what it does is it causes liver insulin resistance specifically mm -hmm. because of the way fructose is metabolized. And when you get liver insulin resistance, that causes your pancreas to have to make more to, for the liver to do its job. That raises levels all over the body. Mm -hmm. That drives energy into fat. Mm -hmm. And also when your liver is insulin resistant, you get a lot of other diseases that go with it that we know about. For instance, diabetes, for instance, uh, cancer, cognitive decline, and other things. So you think uh, drinking soda could give you those diseases in, in the long, long Absolutely. run? Absolutely. That data already exists. So how do we get rid of all the sugar in the That's world? a different question, Andreas. <laughs> that's a, that's a policy answer. question. Okay, let's and leave it for, I'm not, for this I'm time. not there yet. <laughs> okay, but uh, just before we uh, finish this up, uh, I, I think it's interesting because uh, a lot of people are saying, researchers and in the blogosphere, for example, that insulin has nothing to do with obesity. Right. And you are saying it's the most important thing. I think thing. it has everything to do with obesity. Yeah, so why do these people deny that insulin has anything to do with obesity? Well, I think that they're steeped in a certain dogma that you know may have been true 10 years ago, but has clearly been overturned, and they haven't sort of glommed on and accepted you know, what's currently known. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Mike Schwartz at University of Washington has said for 
a decade and a half now that insulin induces satiety, that insulin works like leptin. And really? in the acute situation in the studies that he did, he's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. And I don't discount anything that Schwartz says about the acute effects of insulin in terms of part of being, being part of the satiety signal. Mm -hmm. That's all true. So there's but a signal in, in the brain uh, acutely after a meal saying that you've eaten and right. you Right, you're in the middle of metabolizing a meal, you don't need to eat anymore, and so it's part of you know, satiety. And I have no problem with that. In fact, um, I was a mentor for a graduate student many years ago who injected insulin into the third ventricle and mm -hmm. watched mm -hmm. food intake stop on a dime. Right. So I'm very clear on the acute effects of uh, uh, CNS insulin right. but on not, food intake. That's not the only effect of insulin. And that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the chronic effect. Mm -hmm. Because chronic hyperinsulinemia is a very different animal. In fact, every hormone that exists has a different acute effect than it does a chronic effect. Right. You can pick the hormone and I can show you the difference in how the hormone acts based on whether it's acute or chronic. Right. And insulin is no different. So that's the, the first thing that um, insulin is supposed to give you satiety, not hunger, but that's basically just a short-term effect. Exactly. And, 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 and the long-term effect an is insulin increased sensing. hunger. Right. Uh, so the next thing that many people are saying is that uh, you don't need insulin to store fat. You can store it just fine without it. Well, ask, tell our type 1 diabetics that. Yeah, but they say that that's a special case. And that's not a special count. case. <laughs> no What's special, special case. about that? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I don't, I don't buy that. Uh, so um, another thing is that um, low carb for, for lowering insulin, they say uh, that um, um, it's not just carbs that give you uh, insulin re release, even, even protein does it too, and, and in some cases mm -hmm. even more, like whey protein, right. for right. example, like their right. products. Mm -hmm. So what about that objection? I think that there are a lot of things that can cause insulin to go up. Mm -hmm. Branched chain amino acids cause insulin to go up. Right. So, um, you know, it, it's not just carbohydrate. It's not just fructose. Uh, certainly those, I think, are the big things. Those are the right. things that have increased globally in the last 25 years that coincide with the obesity epidemic. Mm -hmm. But I think there are a lot of things that uh, could potentially do it. And I think for any individual patient, you have to mm -hmm. evaluate the patient and see um, what's going on mm -hmm. and uh, direct therapy appropriately. Right. Anyway, uh, as a physician, when I treat patients with insulin, they usually gain weight, and I'm sure that's of course. Uh, something that most physicians are aware Absolutely. of. Listen, all the diabetics are aware of it yeah. because all the female teenage diabetics omit their insulin shots mm -hmm. specifically to lose weight. It's a manifestation of an eating disorder. Yeah. They know. Right, I know, and they know, and you know. But the people objecting to this, uh, denying uh, insulin, having a role in this, they say that uh, injecting is insulin is a totally different thing. It no, doesn't it have anything to do with the uh, normal physiological insulin production. It has everything to do with it, and I'll show you how. Let's take you, Andreas. You're nice and thin. Mm -hmm. you, you. Eat, you eat 2,000 calories a day. You burn 2,000 calories a day. You feel good. Normal day. Mm -hmm. Are you going to gain weight, lose weight, or stay the same? Stay the same. Right, because you burn what you eat, nothing to store. Fine. Now let's do a little experiment. I'm going to put an IV in your arm, tape it down. Okay? I'm going to follow behind you. Yeah. And every time you reach for food, yeah. I'm going to pump you full of extra insulin that yeah. you didn't want or need. Uh -huh. I'm going to over-insulinize you, yeah. just like we do with our type 1 diabetics. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the new Andreas. Okay. You wake up in the morning, you start out the day eating 2,000 calories just like before. Yeah. But now, because of the excess insulin that I'm pumping you full of, mm -hmm. 500 of those 2,000 straight to fat. Right. You are now 500 calories it. heavier. Now mm -hmm. you ate 2,000, but you lost 500 to your fat. Right. How many calories do you have left to burn? 1,500. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, your body I, I wants wanted 2,000. But your body wants 2,000. Right. So uh, what do we call the like, state? Like 500. Right. So what do you call the state where your body has fewer calories than it wants to burn? It's called? Hunger. Starvation. Mm. So how do you feel when you're starved? Crappy, tired, slothy, mm -hmm. sit mm -hmm. on the couch, don't want to do anything don't want to exercise, maybe play video games, sound right. familiar, and of course hungry. Yeah. So, in a world of free access to food, which we all live in, and you live in, what are you going to do, Andreas? I'm going to eat. Eat back the 500. Mm. So now you're eating 2,500 instead of 2,000, mm -hmm. except, haha, I'm still pumping you full of insulin, so 100 of those 500, whoosh, straight to fat, 
Now you're 600 calories heavier, you're only up to 1900 to burn, you still don't feel great. Mm. So you go to a doctor, you go to a nutritionist, you say, doc, I don't get it. Every time I stand on the scale, I weigh more. How come I'm so fat? And the doctor says, well, I know why you're fat. You're a glutton and a sloth. Mm. Because they're looking at the marker, they're looking at the outcome of that biochemical process, right. not the cause. The right. cause was me injecting mm -hmm. you. The outcome was a change in your behavior. Right. So the problem was too much insulin. Right. Not gluttony or, fl or sloth. sloth. Right. right. There you go. Okay. So we know how to cure the world from <laughs> obesity now. We do. <laughs> Just stop drinking soda. Well, that's a good start. That is a very good start. <laughs> okay. Let's try to make it happen. All right. Sounds good. But thank you very much. You're welcome.